the Liberty Weekly Podcast, Episode 9. Mr. Speaker, this may be the last time I speak on the House floor. At the end of the year, I'll leave Congress after 23 years in office over a 36-year period. My goals in 1976 were the same as they are today, promote peace and prosperity by a strict adherence to the principles of individual liberty. It was my opinion that the course of the U.S. embarked on in the latter part of the 20th century would bring us a major financial crisis and engulf us in a foreign policy that would overextend us and undermine our national security. To achieve these goals, I saw it, the government would have had to shrink in size and scope, reduce spending, change the monetary system, and reject the unsustainable cost of policing the world and expanding the American empire. The problems seem to be overwhelming and impossible to solve, yet from my viewpoint, just following the constraints placed on the federal government by the Constitution would have been a good place to start. Just how much did I accomplish? In many ways, according to conventional wisdom, my off and on career in Congress from 1976 to 2012 accomplished very little. Taxes remain excessive and the prolific increase of incomprehensible regulations continues. Wars are constant and pursued without congressional declaration. Deficits rise to the sky. Poverty is rampant and dependency on the federal government is now worse than any time in our history. All this with minimal concerns for the deficits and unfunded liabilities that common sense tells us cannot go on much longer. I have come to one firm conviction after these many years of trying to figure out the plain truth of things. The best chance for achieving peace and prosperity for the maximum number of people worldwide is to pursue the cause of liberty. If you find this to be a worthwhile message, spread it throughout the land. Welcome to another episode of the Liberty Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Pat McFarlane, and joining me is the first official guest on the podcast. We're really excited to have him on. Uh, this is Charlie Jers. He is going to be the president of Yale, Minnesota chapter. Is that correct? Uh, uh, Patrick, I, I'm, I'm, I apologize. No, I'm not. I'm going to be the social coordinator of Yale, which I was last year. Oh, the no. I... Will be, the president will be Cal Randa. Oh, no. Okay. I thought you were elected at that meeting that was at, or maybe no, I had no, illusions. No, I think that was maybe college libertarians that you went to, because we have two separate, we have Yao and then we have the CL. So it could have been the CL meeting that you went, yeah, it was the CL meeting that you came to. It oh, was. wow. Okay. Well, I was disillusioned then. <laughs> <laughs> maybe next year though, the week, the year after. Okay. Awesome. Well, okay. So what are you... What are your plans with uh, each group? What does YAL do and what does the CLs do? All right. So you also forgot SFL. And SFL is a, a, a bigger uh, organization for me than College Libertarian. So I, the main, my main two groups are YAL and SFL. So um, YAL is currently the fastest growing pro-liberty student organization in the U.S. We have over 900 chapters. We currently have about like nine, is it like nine, 915 ish. We are in every single state across millions of campuses throughout the whole U.S. Well, 900 campuses throughout the whole U.S. And what we do is mainly identify, educate, and um, provide uh, students the resources to advance liberty on their campus. We are not officially a partisan, so we do not um, endorse candidates or political parties. We just um, endorse the ideas of liberty, the principles and ideas of liberty. We work via chapters, um, activism, whether it's hosting speakers or tabling, recruitment drives, whatever it is, that's how we operate across the whole U.S. And then we um, SFL, on the other hand, is uh, is uh, is across the whole uh, the whole world. So it's not just the U.S. Um, it is not chapter based. And um, for them, I am the campus coordinator at my campus, alongside another good friend of mine, uh, Nathan Edmondson. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I recognize Nathan Edmondson because okay, so I need to do a little background on myself because I was in Yale when I was at the U of M. And um, I, I should have mentioned SFL because that's how Charlie and I met was in. Correct. At, yeah, at Freedom yes, Fest. Sir. Correct. Freedom Fest in Vegas the last yep. summer. Exactly. So that was a blast, man. That was so much fun. Oh, my God. It was a blast. It really was. 
and it's like what, so, a, what a week we had it was awesome oh i know and it's like such a small world too because i remember seeing you in line and you were with some friends that we had together and um or they became our friends and it was like <laughs> man are know. you are you going to the u of m because i thought didn't you have some gopher gear on or something like that you, you know a backpack a gopher backpack the u the, the m backpack the u of m backpack yeah, that was so exciting yep. for me because I was oh, like, oh, I'm all alone and no, I'm not, you know. Who would have thought we would have encountered each other in Vegas in the middle of a Freedom Fest uh, event, but. Yeah, that, that was so cool. That's so, the world we're in. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So, like, uh, some people that we met at Freedom Fest was Steve Forbes and uh, I met Peter mm -hmm. Schiff and uh, Bob mm -hmm. Murphy from the Mises Institute. Yep. Um, yeah. Grandpa, Gary, Gary Johnson. We met Gary Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Bill Wells. Yeah, all those, all those all figures, those, all those, <laughs> all those interesting <laughs> figures. And I think, I think Jeffrey Tucker was there too, wasn't he? I do not recall seeing Jeffrey Tucker. I yeah. might be wrong, but I do not recall seeing Jeffrey Tucker. Oh, well, I, well, I, I know Nick, well, Nicholas Sar Sarwark was there. Angela Keaton, who else? Man, it's been a year. Rand, Rand Crazy Paul was flies. there. Yep, Rand Paul was I, there. I got his uh, photograph with him. I think no, Jeffrey Tucker was there because I remember him being there. <laughs> Yeah, you, you might be. I, I forgot about Jeffrey Tucker. Yeah, uh, I, yeah I'm might, I think you're right. I think he was. And um, I so who's who, the guy who always takes the pictures? You know, like you're not you're not in Yale if you don't have a picture taken by. Oh, I know his name. He's, he's on the tip of my tongue. I'll go through. Yeah, and I, isn't it Jude Wise? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so I wanted. Oh to... yeah, you're not a real libertarian unless you have a the black and white profile Facebook picture of Jude Weiss. Yeah, of either That's a classic. Either either by Jude Weiss or your picture with Ron Paul, oh. probably taken <laughs> by Jude Weiss. That's the other one, the classic picture of the handshaking with Ron Paul. That's the other classic. How do yeah. you spot a libertarian on Facebook? Yeah, one -on -one. exactly, dude. Um, okay, so so let's let's talk a little bit about Yale and what your guys' plans are for the coming year. I know, like, a lot of what we did when I was in it was the free speech wall and, like, handing out constitutions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is it pretty much the same? Okay, so, um, right now I'm at Yale for the summer interning, and I'm, right now I'm focusing on the Midwest, and, uh, and, um, I, I, well, because okay, my role right now is different than my role at YLUMN. Um, as a school, we have not, as of right now, come up with a with a, a sort of plan of what we want to do for next year. Last year, we brought Angela Key and Julie Borowski. We we did a tabling. We had an, a debate between uh, Liberty. Well, no, that was that wasn't hosted by us, so I, that's not that wasn't us. But anyway, um, some of our members did represent uh, libertarian ideas uh, at a debate, but that was not with yeah, it was a different um, uh, student club. So um, for next year, we do not have a, a specific layout plan. But yeah, so last year uh, we had Julie Borowski come to speak against the drug war. We did the free speech fall twice, so fall and spring. We brought Angela Keegan to speak against uh, about foreign policy and anti-war. Um, we, what else did we do? Yeah, those oh. are some pretty big names. Like that's oh, pretty yeah. impressive. No, we we had a, a great year as a chapter. We really did. So we had consistent members. Yeah. Every week we had we had meetings. No, we 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 did do a, a good job overall last year as yeah yeah i was and, I was, as, and oh sorry you, you you can go <laughs> no no go ahead go ahead Patrick. oh i i was kind of bummed that i couldn't make the angela keaton and um oh, you know right. from antiwar.com because that's yeah. such a staple my it's become such a staple in my you know reading and trying to mm -hmm. figure out what's going right. on so, oh no, it was awesome yeah it, it really was but we'll we'll hope to bring another anti-war speaker next year or something along those lines maybe oh we're thinking about david bowes that's one of our top uh, speakers on in mind right now David okay the Cato Institute yeah um, well and I was um when when I was in the chapter we brought in Ron Paul and that was the big thing oh you or, were there that, that that was 2014 wasn't it yep yep and you it, were there it wasn't me no actually kidding. it was it was the old president that did a whole bunch of Chaz. stuff yeah Chaz Fenske yep. that was yep. Yeah, he was. Offensive. That was legendary, and you know, seeing Ron Paul was just awesome. It was like I heard a, it was wild. a spiritual yeah. experience, man. Like, yeah, I heard it was. Yeah, YL at UMN has always been a, a one of the top uh, YL chapters in the U.S. It's a yeah. very active Yale. Well, which well, is so Yale chapter, which is so funny because okay, so when I joined, it sounded to me like 
they used to have like 50 or 60 members coming regularly and that was in the the peak of the ron paul craze in like 2012 no kidding yeah dude and then 50 60 members when i came it was we got we were back down to about eight or nine but no because every everyone was like oh there's nothing to do so everyone quit at one time and then you know there were options for people to join and become leaders you know wow yeah 50 60 members wow we hope to get there for next year yeah that would be yeah that would be awesome across across campus so we definitely are are striving to keep growing and uh, as a matter of fact last night i got well one of my uh duties as a summer intern at yl is to start chapters i'm i'm focusing on the midwest the the midwest uh intern so i got this i got someone in st cloud to start a chapter last night and off of that, I want to build a, a solid, robust a chapter in St. Cloud. And f- given how close we are, we're about like one hour uh, and a half away. I've never been to St. Cloud, so I'm not sure how far we are. Yeah. Um, I hope to establish some sort of coalition and, connect, and alliance with the YEL at St. Cloud so we can, you know, host events together, um, you know, just basically form a two-in-one in two separate schools, but like one solid big chapter in the Minneapolis-St. Cloud um, region. So... So yeah, we're we're growing. I mean, the Twin Cities, Liberty, we're now Liberty Movement. The Twin Cities, yeah, we 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 got more. I think we got more SFL uh, CCs coming in for next year. As a matter of fact, also from our school. So oh, um, that's awesome, dude. So so yeah, I, we're out there. We're out there. Yeah, I didn't. I I'm sorry, I neglected to mention that you're out in DC right now. Do you want to talk about that a bit more? Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, as Patrick just said, I'm I'm in, in well working in Arlington at the YL National Headquarters, and uh, my main uh focus is a midwest well i am the midwest intern so what that means is that my main uh, folk my main my my region not my main but like literally my region is the midwest so that includes minnesota iowa you know on and on and um so that includes my main tasks include like starting chapters of uh, facebook graph searching so finding potential leaders people li- like-minded individuals across facebook um uh getting uh, uh people at uh, 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 getting applicants for Yalcon, so calling people, getting them to apply to Yalcon, which will take place on July 26th until July 29th at the Catholic University of America in D.C. So if you have not applied yet, I highly encourage every single one of you to apply. It's a quick application. It is free. And if you get accepted, because you, you need to get accepted, it's not just that you register and you automatically go. No, you got to apply. Um, you do have to submit a quick two-minute video, so it's not it's nothing crazy, just a quick video. It's not going to be public. Um, so if you get, if you get accepted, you have the option of whether you want to go or not. And if you do want to go, it would cost 30 bucks and that includes lodging and food. But, um, we got Rand Paul already locked. Um, Rand Paul, I forgot the other speakers. I know Rand Paul is the the main one right now, but it's going to, I went last year for my first time and it was incredible. You meet people from all over the U S you see speakers, you know, now you come out to DC. You after the events, you you hang out with your friends that you meet. So, for all those who have not applied yet, I highly encourage every single one of you to apply. It really is an awesome time. Yeah, that that is awesome. That sounds real fun. But mm, what you is. what she what you should do is uh, shoot me the link after we're done here. I will. Yeah, and I'll put it in the show notes so people can just go click if they're interested. Just in case, I'll just say right now. But I will also send it to you. But I'm just gonna blatantly like say it out because it's not that. Um, complex. Oh, that's so good. So the link, is, the, the link is yaliberty.org slash convention. So yliberty.org slash convention. It will take you uh, straight to the website. You'll see all the info, and um, yeah, you apply right there. It's a concise, quick application. So. Yeah, great idea, dude. That's um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have to apologize. Uh, there's some ambient noise here. I we had. I don't know if you heard the fire trucks going past. Um, but I'm in my apartment, and usually we record in my co-host Jerry's basement, and it's real quiet. Um, but so we're here in my apartment, so there's like my cat is walking around yowling. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I'll, I can't cut that out. But um, oh. I just like to stress, you know, the the friends that you make at stuff like this. Like, I mean, obviously we've stayed friends since we met last summer. Mm-hmm. And, yep. and we met exactly. A- we met a bunch of other people and you know we just nerded out the whole time like yep just you know there was one guy um a good friend that we made who who i don't know why he was at freedom fest because he's more on the left side isn't he i'm i'm wait who was it or I, i'm thinking about abe no, or not abe oh 
Oh, yeah. Ahab. Ahab, yeah. Ahab, yeah. And and but he he was a character, and so we were always oh, just you know having a good time yeah. sparring <laughs> back and forth about and, things. And the, and the good thing is that we we're a small community. We're the minority. We are we're a very small group of people. So the odds of you seeing the same person again are very high. For example, I saw Ahab again at, at ISFLC this year in February, DC. So the odds of you encountering the same people are very high. So, you know, you form a, a, a community of, of, well, yeah, you form a community. You guys are, you know, you guys become friends. You guys establish some sort of connection, you know? So, and it's across the whole U.S. You have friends in Pennsylvania, Texas, Utah, Arkansas, whatever it is. So, and those are friends that, you know, either they'll be for networking or just friends for life. It, it's, it, it really isn't, it's part of the, of being part of the movement. It's an experience, it's part of the experience overall. So, that's also a huge benefit of, of, of being part of the movement, without a doubt. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that surprised me when I came back was like, oh man, you know, it, it is a small community. It all shrinks. Oh yeah, definitely. It, it shrinks, it shrinks, and shrinks. Yeah, so... It's um, smaller and smaller. I, 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 I know you got time constraints, so I'll let you go here in about four minutes. Uh, but if you want to talk about what has your experience been like in D.C. so far? Okay, yeah. Just got here one week ago so um i have not been here for a long period of time but as of right now the first week was awesome so um i was in, at the yale office monday and tuesday and uh well as you said my as i said before my main uh task was grab searching calling getting people on facebook talking to them calling people on, over the phone for yale con or for chapters um getting people uh, incentivizing people to start your yale chapters at their campus and then i um, i got my yl internship via cki the charles coke institute so on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we had a CKI a training. So I was not at the YL office. So um, I went to the CKI office, uh, yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And it was over 100 students there. So I, I got the chance to meet people, again, from all over the U.S. We were all different in different organizations. So I was in YL, for example. Some of my friends are in the Atlas found, uh, Atlas. Uh, is it Atlas Foundation? I, I think I it's the Atlas, Atlas Society, Atlas. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that one. There. So that's an example. IHS. Um, the, uh, the what is it um whatever it is and you know all those sister organizations um across the whole across dc and arlington all over the uh, leadership for example li also some friends at li leadership institute so we were all in different organizations and um yeah those three days we, we just uh trained about like we got trained about what cki is all about like for example the marketing mbm marketing based management their philosophy system um yeah what the institute does um what, what we what we should expect about the internship overall how we should behave how should we should exceed be successful um so it was a great chance to network um learn about both about what exactly we are doing what our main role is and how we should take advantage of our time while we're out here so i have not been at the office besides uh, monday and tuesday so uh, the, i guess the, the main the real real first week would be the week upcoming but I'll, yeah it's been an awesome first week i could not have asked for a better first week yeah that's good that's awesome. I'm I'm glad that you're you're fitting in, you know. Uh, but what is what is what is the message then that they're trying to say? Like, what is your role? Uh, by they, do you mean CKI or Yale? Because after all, they're two separate organizations. Yeah, that's that's so, a good point. Uh, well, what do you see from each one? Okay, so Yale, which is like my like it's like my main one because that's what I'm working for them. I got it, I got it via CKI, but that's like my main one. The main message, well, I mean, it's obviously getting liberty to people, but what, I, what they see the most in people, what they seek for the most is people who are genuinely passionate about what they're doing. In this case, it's uh, spreading the ideas of liberty across the whole U.S. So uh, that tops everything else, in my opinion, that I've seen in Ya and what they expect of me. Passion. Yeah. And, uh, well, obviously, uh, perseverance. For example, to get the Yao chapter at St. Cloud started last night, it took me weeks to get this one person to finally fill out the application and be committed to the to the to the the leadership role that they're about to embark on. So that obviously perseverance because it's not easy to, you know, get people like random people, literally random people on Facebook to oh, trust yeah. you, to get to accept your request, to message you back, to call you. So they they highly value people who are genuine and passionate about what they're doing and you got to you, you can't be, you know, afraid of what strangers because that's what they are what they're going to say or think because that's part of their job, you know, hit up strangers on Facebook. So that's what I would say about, yeah, you know, passionate, um, high energy individuals. And for CKI, 
they highly value well the their MBM uh, management system, and one one of the one of the the key well they have their ten different um, main concepts concepts that they look for. So for example, humility, integrity, tolerance, respect. That's something I highly noticed in TKI. How much they promote being respectful to one another, encouraging differences and ideas and views and opinions, beliefs, whatever it is, and being respectful of one another. You know, at TKI, we, there was people from all over the political spectrum, right wing, left wing, center, center left, center right, and cap. The list goes on. Yeah. So that, yeah. So that's that's um, that's something I, I noticed at TKI. How much they they, they encourage and value the respect and uh, treatment of one another. And, um, for example, also one of their big things is, for example, challenging your respectfully challenging your supervisors, whether it's like a, a, an opinion or something like questioning, um, being confident, pro- providing opinions, providing ideas, not being afraid like, to, to talk to your supervisors. Like, you, you know, being yeah, value, value, creating value for the organization you work for. And that includes participating, being active, asking questions and being out there, like just being out there, you know, you're, you're part of them, whether it's your supervisor, your employer, whatever it is, you're, you're one of them and you're going to bring value just like CKI bring C, the CK, well, the Coke industries, I should say, brings value to society. They will expect us to bring value to our organizations. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Though, uh, interesting differences, you know, between, I guess there are two different entities. So, you know, obviously they, they have their own internal structure, right? Yeah, correct. Um, all right. All right. So I'll just uh, just to ask, how can people follow either your work or the work of, you know, all the, the organizations you're involved with at the U? OK, yeah. So um, at the U, we have a College Libertarians Facebook and Twitter. So the Twitter is at CL underscore UMN. Yeah, that's is it? Yeah, UMN. And for Facebook, it's just College Libertarians at the University of Minnesota. And then for YAL, it's the, the Twitter. Uh, I believe it's capital letters y-a-l underscore gophers yeah. i might be wrong on that one yeah i, th- but, uh, I think you're right I, i'm pretty sure it is that one yeah I don't, I don't really use facebook all that all that much um and for the facebook it's uh what young americans for liberty at the university of minnesota um well sfl isn't chapter based so we don't have like a umn sfl but yeah. if you'd want to get involved with sfl the twitter is at sf liberty and facebook it's uh, students for liberty and if you guys want to follow me or whatever it is, just I'm on Facebook, Twitter. My Facebook is Charlie Gers, and my Twitter is at Gers, G-E-R-S, Charlie. And then you guys, any questions or anything, you can also just hit me up right there, and we, I'd, I'd be more than glad to talk to any one of you. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, Charlie, uh, it's great to talk to you again. Um, you know, I'm really proud of what you're doing out there and that you were able to get this position. It's so impressive. So best of luck to you, and thanks for doing this interview with me. I appreciate your words, Patrick. I wish you the best, and I'm also very proud of you for everything you're doing and the the, the on air show that you're doing right now. That's really awesome. I highly admire your your passion and perseverance to pursue your your ideas on air and not just on air, but in public. Oh yeah, well thanks, bud. I okay. Well, um, well this was signing off for the audience here. Um, that was our okay. first guest, Charlie. Woo! I feel honored. All right, everyone, that was our first guest, Charlie Gers, and uh, once again, we're very grateful for having him on here, and I I hope to bring in some more guests here uh, in the future as this progresses. Uh, Just a few housekeeping things here. I would definitely urge everyone to keep track of Charlie's work. Uh, He's doing a lot of good stuff. Uh, As you could see in the description, he has a very, very, very long list of things that he's up to. So be sure to give him a follow. Once again, we are ending our gift card giveaway today. Uh, I think I might actually extend the the giveaway time until maybe 8 p.m. Central Time tonight so people have a chance to listen to the episode and uh, get on our email list. Uh, You can find a link in the description to the video here. Um, In addition to that, uh, make sure that you subscribe, rate, review us on any platform that you're listening to this audio right now. And I I am going to be out of town next week, so I'm trying to record a few episodes to have put in the pipeline. Um, I'm going to Mississauga for a wedding, which I'm very excited about. Um, So I love Canada. I love hockey. Maybe the audience will learn a little bit more about that if we have some hockey related episodes that have to do with liberty or uh, i don't know i'll be talking about it and on another note we do have our zazzle store is open now uh for today 
only, you can get 15% off all of our merchandise here uh, if you follow through the store link uh, in, the, in the episode description. Otherwise, if you go to our website at www.libertyweekly.net forward slash nine will be the episode notes for this episode, but also there's a tab at the top that says shop. And if you hit the shop tab, then you'll go to our Zazzle store where we have tons of merchandise, including coffee cups, beer steins. I have a whole bunch of shirts that I put up in a a lot of different cuts, Liberty Weekly playing cards, and uh, just all sorts of stuff that you can get. And all of it's customizable. So if you don't like the way that the graphics are arranged or anything like that, you can go in and you can blow it up actually and you can switch it around and stuff. So Zazzle gives us a whole lot of flexibility uh, to do with our merch store. And I would be calling on all of you to help us out with that because actually next week here we have to renew our web hosting for the website. And Jerry and I are just poor kids right now and we're really you know, looking to not go into the red with the podcast. So any help from you guys would be appreciated. Uh, We are listener-supported media. Uh, Without you, we wouldn't exist. And so we're not beholden to anyone. And uh, as this podcast grows, that's going to become bigger and bigger of a deal for us, is to not be beholden to any groups. So I'd I'd also like to mention that uh, if you'd like to contribute directly to the website, there's a secure PayPal option on our homepage. If you go through on the left-hand side and scroll down a bit, there is a PayPal option for you. Uh, to help us out with that web hosting. And any help is greatly, greatly appreciated. If we find out that it's you, we will give you or your moniker a shout out on the show. And like I said in the last episode, it will be preserved forever in the annals of history. So uh, there's that option. But thank you so much for joining us in our first ever interview on the Liberty Weekly podcast. Uh, We hope that you'll join us again on Thursday.